Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega, and I'm here with our um, guest, Anel. Anel, it's great to see you. All right. Thanks this, for having me. This is like this is going to be a special series. It's like this is like we're taping three shows today. Okay, the the this is like episode 152, Free Will and Doing the Best We Can. Right now, then we're going to like tape another two shows, and then we're going into like a special format. Like we'll be doing live shows like once a month. Then we're going, you know, so like because you know we got to wait for you guys to to get this, you know. <laughs> so all right, so um. So that's it for that. Um, all right, so free will and doing the best we can. The, the way we're going to, you know, this show is going to be about, like, the reason we don't have free will, the reason that stuff isn't up to us, it was, we can only do the best we can. That's all we can do. So, like, Anel, explain it to them. Well, before every show, we want to define what we mean by free will very clearly. So let, let you go first, and then I'll... All right. Free will means that, like, if we had a free will... We could do whatever we wanted to do, that it would be in our, in our hands. In other words, like if we wanted to act in a certain way, think a certain way, feel a certain way, whatever, we could do it. And nothing that's not in our control would be either taking part in it or making the decision for us. That's what free will is. Should we explain why it's just not, you know? Well, I would like to say that you cannot make a decision outside of your genetics and conditioning. So free will would mean making a decision or any part of a decision that's 100% independent of one's genetics and conditioning. Now think about it, 100%. In other words, like if you've got like, let's say like it's your Conscious, decision. unconscious doesn't matter because it's all, it, you know, I could do another example, but I don't want to cut you yeah, off. Yeah, no, Go no, ahead. all right. So like, you know, you make a decision. You say, you know, all right, this decision, let's say is like it's 95% my decision but then five percent of it is genetics that's not a free will i'm sorry even like one fraction of one percent that's genetics makes free will impossible just like nullifies you know the the, the whole notion right so even if you say i make one percent of my decision is free will that one percent has to be 100 percent independent of your genetics and conditioning totally nonsensical crazy and impossible all right, and we've gone through a lot of ways why we don't have a free will. Today we're going to be focused on something that everybody knows. We know this, okay? Like, we, you know, like when, when we do stuff that, like, doesn't work out or when other people do things that work out, what do we say? We say, like, hey, you know, I was only – I was doing the best I can. You know, I'm not perfect. Okay, before we get into today's topic, we skipped over why it's important. <laughs> this thing is so important that my, co my host – I'm the co-host here – it's so important that we feel like giving up that no one's getting it. It's so unbelievably important, and we're trying right. really hard for everyone to get it. The fact we're is, not encouraged anymore. We want to give up. Let's be honest. It's so important because this belief in free will, what's so funny? It, fact, touch, it, touches, wait, it touches everything we do. It encompasses the umbrella of consciousness on the planet Earth. We go around. We have our shows. We have our meetups. We've written our books. And we still can't get anybody to really give us money or support the cause. We're on cable access in White Plains. We're on cable access in Manhattan. We want to know why we're not on CNN and live primetime, 9 o'clock every night all over the world, debating whether or not humans have free will. I'm very discouraged, to be honest with you. Um, I don't know how we keep going. I feel the same way. Well, we That's don't have a free will, but you know, our hedonic imperatives are telling us to give up. It's not worth it. I know. And, and then, why is it important? It's just only, it's only the most important thing ever. It is. That's it's, how, I mean, you tell the world before we get right. into why how is it important. Yeah, why is it important? It's important because, like, ordinarily we think, yeah, stuff is up to us, right? When we realize that absolutely nothing is up to us, then that means everything is up to, like, whatever everything is up to. God, the universe, call it whatever you will. That's a completely different consciousness. It's a completely different consciousness. Now, just yesterday in the cover of the Post and the Daily News, they had a picture of Bernie Madoff that said, burn in hell, because he got a heart attack or something. Putting people in hell for all of eternity on the cover of papers just uh, per perpetuates this free will craziness. I know, and it leads to, like, you know, you don't want people, like, you know, hating people and blaming people for stuff that's not their fault that they can't do anything about. You can fear them. You can't hate them. Yeah. So why is it important? It's so important that there are no words to explain how this revolution, you know, would change consciousness 
on the entire planet. You're looking at me funny. Well, the, the fact <laughs> that it's so important and we've got so emotionally involved is getting the universe to want to, to compel us to want to stop doing it. There's a few things that it's could so be frustrating to live on a planet this nutty there's and insane that, like you so is, you got PhDs fighting us. There's a few things that could potentially be more important. Name one. All right, I'm, I'm going to name. See, this is three. entertaining. No script. I'm going to name three. All right. Yeah, the okay. first is like if they create a happiness pill, makes everybody blissed out. That'll be more important. If they create if they create a goodness uh, pill, a, a pill that makes us do good that we don't like, you know, do bad stuff. That'll be really important. If they legalize marijuana in the United <laughs> States and throughout the, all the other countries. That would be huge. That would prob that that would be the biggest thing ever. Because like marijuana, like it is like an amazing, amazing substance. It's very medicinal. It like it elevates consciousness. Okay, now you're losing some credibility <laughs> here in the in the in the in the room. <laughs> Comparing legalizing marijuana to knocking off the free will illusion is. You know why I say that? It's because like I, uh, a pebble in a sand versus the universe. It's just right. come on. The reason Cut I say out. that. I'm no. glad there's no. Uh, and now, now I'm elevating myself ahead of you. That is the most ridiculous thing. Um, all right, we got to happiness get pill. Topic. If you could find a pill that always blissed you out, I mean, it's not possible because I believe you have to feel good with bad. I mean, how would you know you're happy if you were never sad? There are some people in the world that they have this condition called like a hype, hyperthymic personality. In other words, like these people are like extraordinarily okay, happy. Okay, so I, I'm saying we not believing like in free will makes you happier. Yeah. But if you could just take a pill and be happier and still believe in free will, you would still have the wrong foundation to consciousness. I think it's not as big. The goodness pill still not as big as shattering the belief. The free will is encompassing everything. The only thing that might kind of be bigger is if you absolutely knew for certain what happened after you died. That would be bigger, absolutely. No, I still don't think so because then if you if – you if you found out what happened after you died and you still believed in free will, you'd still be going through life all wrong. So aliens. Finding Contact intelligent aliens. life, if you still believed in free will, wouldn't be bigger because the overall consciousness would be incorrect. The you foundation may be right. would be correct. You may so be there's right. nothing bigger. Please strike from the record that crazy Legalizing marijuana. Legalizing marijuana. No, because you know why? Because our civilization is founded on alcohol and caffeine. These are great substances. Alcohol relaxes. Let's allows stick to us the topic. To this is the illusion of free will. <laughs> if there's no free will, that needs to be discussed. Whether or not a stupid thing like marijuana being illegal is, come on. I'm telling you. All right. So, all right. Back to. We're talking about the biggest thing ever here. This is the biggest People thing all, ever, yes. 90% or 80% of the planet believes in free will. It doesn't exist. They're going through life. You know what they say about the butterfly effect, right? Yes. The smallest change of a butterfly can cause a typhoon. And so the smallest ripple effect out of people starting to get that there's no free will, which would create a whole new human species. I hear you. I hear you. That's why, like, to back this that up. This is the up, biggest thing ever. We say this. I know. We say John this Searle, a lot. John Searle, go ahead. Yes, John Searle. <laughs> I guess it's like, Absolutely. We haven't been here in months. <laughs> in go ahead. Do your John in Searle. Nobody's heard of John Searle. Yeah. 2010, they did, like, a ranking of the the most popular the, the 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 you know this is this guy's the the they did a ranking 10th most cited philosopher after two no the 13th uh, whatever of, of philosophers throughout the entire world born after 1900 john searle is ranked 13th in terms of how many times he's been cited by other philosophers so this and guy what was his take on it he said that if free will were acknowledged by the world to be an illusion, that would be a bigger revolution in our thinking than Einstein or Copernicus or Galileo or Newton or Darwin, and that it would alter our whole conception of our relation with the universe. That's big. That's big. How can you Now know? you're talking. It's almost as big as, again, legalizing marijuana is probably bigger, but like, you know. What? This is big. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, look, we can't get into it this show because we got to get Legalizing into it. marijuana is bigger than shattering the oh, illusion you know of free why? will? Because, like, all right, here's the thing. Like, our reality, the, the reality we're aware of is, like, 4% of the universe. In other words, like, there's 96% of the universe that's, like, dark matter, dark energy. There's a whole spiritual side to us, right, that we're not accessing because alcohol allows us to access a little. Caffeine doesn't really. Caffeine just helps us work. But marijuana allows us to access our higher selves in that way. So but if they legalize that. marijuana and people are still getting high, believing in free will, it's all screwed up. They're getting high with the wrong con uh, foundational consciousness. It could paradigm. be. Paradigm. It could be. The you can't have the wrong paradigm. No, no, no. Here's the thing. It could be. We've been doing this oh, for three years. Oh, if people smoke weed, they'll get it. There you go. Oh, That's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. 
So what my nutty co-host is saying, if they legalize (laughs) marijuana, he believes it'll be a conduit and a facilitator of getting to the no free will paradigm, which is the truth. I get it. Yes. So you're saying the shattering the belief in free will is the biggest thing ever, but legalizing marijuana will help people get to that step. Well, because they're not getting it now. We're about to quit. Legalizing marijuana might actually be even bigger. How could it be bigger? Because like it opens up a new consciousness. I mean, like. You know, it's a new consciousness. The only one that matters is getting rid of free will. Well, I don't know, because, like, for example, if what if do you, mean you could, don't know, you're the host of this. No, I mean, like, uh, but You've been again, doing this for three years. I know, but again, like, for example, if everybody becomes <laughs> this is much entertainment, happier, folks, this is unscripted. <laughs> what do you mean it's bigger than you? You've been st- <laughs> talking if, to me for three years, two right, years about this. Well, you did a year without me. If we meet aliens, or if, if we find out what happens after we die, or if we like make everybody completely happy, those are big things. I think they're bigger. Let than me this get stuff. the camera here. Nothing is bigger than shattering the illusion of free will. I don't know what drugs he's on today. Nothing is bigger than changing the paradigm of human consciousness, going from the incorrect free will paradigm to the correct free will is an illusion, doesn't exist paradigm. I don't know what. He's probably took marijuana before he came here. I haven't. Nothing. I don't care. It's aliens. Uh Finding out what happens after you die or a happiness pill, you have to have the right consciousness, which is there's no free will. All right. So That's how big it is. We got stuck. We got stuck. We've right. established that, like this thing is big. It may not be the biggest Just thing, whatever, but it's big. That's what I'm saying. But we can, all right. We've been doing this for three years. I know the things we're like, comparing it to is finding intelligent alien life and finding out what happens after you die and making a pill. So we're talk, comparing it to very big things. How about, how about living like for 500, 1,000 years? Again, if you believe in free will and you're going through life incorrectly with the wrong consciousness paradigm, it's you're, you're all you're going in the you're doing something big in the wrong how about, way. How about like living till you're 80 and then you start like growing younger, like like Benjamin Button, believing be cool. in free will or not? Well, both. I mean, both. both. What I'm to. saying is like this is this is the biggest thing according to Searle, and I think it's super big and all, but it's not the only big big thing. Again, like becoming really happy. If everybody like blisses out. Happen- I don't believe that's possible. I believe shattering the illusion or the myth of free will is possible. All right, but here's the you thing. You can't be happy all the time because you got to weigh pain and pleasure. You can. You know why? Because like No, studied- but they've done studies with people who, who only feel pleasure and can't feel they're very dangerous kids. Buddhist monks, Buddhist monks, they meditate. All they do is meditate all day and stuff. They bliss out. Okay, fine. Hedonic imperative rules, okay. If I could feel happy every – the reason why we're doing the show is to feel happier and better about ourselves. By shattering the free, you know, we're ha- life is better without free will. And then, that, exactly, that's what I'm, so I'm so saying. So if, like, if I could just have a pill and, and, and be blissed out every moment of every day, but yet I'm still believing in free will, I don't think that's good for the planet. And it's you want to know something? And you want to know something? We're stuck here for too many so minutes. Like, so basically, we just tell everyone it's the biggest thing ever and let's get to the topic? It's the biggest thing ever. Right. No, I wanted, this is important. Like, why is it the biggest thing ever? Because, like, if everybody gets this, we'll create a happier planet, right? Right. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> Cannabis. We need many shows. We're not getting. <laughs> cannabis can do that too. You know, there's cannabis is a euphoric. You you know, you smoke that stuff, you eat that stuff, you you feel much better. But if you feel better doing these drugs and you still believe in free will, how's the biggest thing ever would be blissed out and not believing Absolutely. in free will? Then you're correct. At Absolutely. Least. Yeah. And then like you know. All right, let's deal. move on. All right. All right. So this is the biggest thing ever. I don't know how we got sidetracked. What's today's topic? We're, free will and doing the best we can. Oh, okay. I've recently coined a new imperative called the optimization imperative. The optimization imperative states that human beings are always doing the very best they can. Now, here's the kicker. At the time, okay? You're doing the very best you can. Say it's very slow. At At the the time. time. So don't call the show next week and say, well, I have a genius son and he smokes weed. (laughs) He plays video. He smokes weed. He plays video games. He lies around the house all day. He should be, he's going to be a doctor. He's not doing the best he can. No, Mrs. Smith. He's not doing the best he can at the time. I mean, he's later on in life, he might be able to do quote-unquote better, but your son, Jeremy, is doing the best he can at that time. Emotionally, psychologically, mentally, physically, psychically, intellectually, every which way, physically, he's doing the very best he can at the time. The psychological and emotional discomfort of doing otherwise, he has limits. He's doing the best. Therefore, I'm almost done. If you're doing the very best you can at the time, that automatically means what? 
that everything you don't predetermined, have a free will. right? Everything is yeah, because if you're doing the very best you can, that at, means every you time have free I, will. Every time I go like that, you say at the time. At the if time. you're doing very the very best you can, at the time. At the time. At the time. Then therefore, everything you has to be the way will. it is. There's no otherwise you could do because you could, could have done otherwise. This? You would have. If you're doing the very best you can. I just want to go back time, to the, the time. No, no. At, at, I want to go then back every, to then of course, wait, 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 wait. Then, of course, everything's predetermined. Right. It's, it's no right. free will. Okay. There's a caveat with the ca- with the cannabis thing, all right? Because I'm advocating, like, legalizing marijuana for people over the age of 21 because that's the thing. See, he's going off topic. He's no, doing no, the very best know, he can like, at the time. He's it's, nutty. It's crazy. No, no, because, like, it's just like our, we don't have any sponsors, but if we did, like, they'd want to hear this. In other words, I'm not advocating cannabis for young people because, like, for, for teenagers and kids, unless, you know, if you have, like, if you have like some some like conditions like epilepsy, a- actually cannabis is very good for it, but it has to be medicinal. Can we stick to exploring the no, illusion no, but of I'm free just will saying, again? Like twenty one and over, right? Not not for kids, all right. So all right, so like at the time, at <laughs> you're at clearly doing the best you can at the time because I know you'll do better in the future. At the time, so in other words, like so yeah, so like what happens is like we do the best we can at the time. That's correct. And if we had a free will, if that's the assumption in life. Then obviously free will can't exist. Exactly. Because everything's predetermined. If you're always doing now, what if Dan Dennett calls a show and says, "Well, you could have done better. Uh, uh, you could have done otherwise." I'm Dan Dennett, the philosopher, and roughly to say, I was playing golf last week and I missed the putt. I could have made it if I had just concentrated more and felt more courageous and more confident. I would have made that putt. You know what I would say to that? Coulda, woulda, shoulda. You know, you can't. You know, like. You don't have a free will. You you know if you could have, you would have, you know. So he you know he couldn't have because he you know. Well, all emotional states have a causal history. If you weren't courageous at that moment, it's because you didn't build up the courage to get now that. Here's make the that. thing. And wait a sec. The entire state of the universe would have to have been different for him to make the putt instead of miss the you putt. You want to know? You something? can't go back in time and say, well, I could have made that putt. Well, if you could have, why didn't you? I know. Yeah. Now here's here's a very important point. I'm getting Mike. very upset. This topic is. This is terrible. It's so obvious. I know. There's no free will. But they're doing the best they can. The planet's doing the best they yes. can. Yes. Now here's the I thing. Ha- I, I fear the planet. I don't hate it because I can't hate anyone because it's not up to them. You can't even hate. But then God again, anything? if everything has a causal history, people are causal chain change facilitators. You and I are intersecting the universe and trying to cause this change. In other words, we're doing the best we can at the time, and we have no choice but to convince people there's no free will. Exactly. Here's the we're, thing. We're, we're change facilitators. That's what we are. Double standard. Hypocrisy. I'm going to talk about hypocrisy on big time now because that's what happens. In other words, like people will say, yeah, you know, I understand that we're all doing the best we can. <coughs> at the <coughs> time. At the time. They understand that, you know, our, their kids, that other people, that they, they get that. Nobody's going to, like, say, no, that's not right, okay? But – when you get them to say, all right, fine, because we're all doing the best no, we can. No, some people say that people aren't doing the Let best they finish. can. Come on. Okay, but I'm just saying. No, well, no, not people. Who's going to say a that? A lot of people. All right, but or most people, most the vast majority of people understand. I we're just gave doing you an example p- before. The mother catches I a son uh, playing video games and cutting class and smoking pot all day. You're not doing the best you can. You should be, you're, 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 you got into Harvard. You dropped out. All right, well, that's. You could do better. But he's doing the best he can at the time. Right, at the time. So she'll say, right. okay. But anyway, my point is that like people get this. A lot of people get that we're at the time we're doing the best we can. But the hypocrisy, the, the, the lack of consistency, consistency, the double talk thing is like they, we can't, the world can't Flip-flopping move. Flip-flopping is the word you're looking for. Exactly. They don't, they don't move from like understanding that to understanding that that means that we don't have a free will. I'm telling you. All right, we got like about eight minutes left. So what like, a show. Got way have, off topic have there. We, have rescued we, it. Have we explained this sufficiently? I mean, like, you know. Well, it's a relatively new theory that I came up with, the wording it as the optimization imperative. Do you have a better word for enunciating or That's putting good. into English language what it means to always be refuting free will with the optimization imperative? Can we use the maximization imperative? What other words could we use? Walking a mile in a person's shoes. That takes too long. It's not catchy. You have the hedonic imperative. You have causality. You have the unconscious. You have a lot of ways of refuting free will. I, I would like to call it the optimization imperative. You're mandated by the universe to always being the best, doing the best you can at the time. All right. 
So yeah. optimization imperative? Optimization imperative. All right. So when do you want to talk about the hedonic imperative, which is another brilliant way of refuting free will? We can talk about it right now. I mean, we can do whatever the universe allows us to do, not whatever we want. Well, we have a lot of refutations of free will. How about the who would be depressed refutation? All right. Or uh, hmm. which ones do we have? We have the unconscious. How about Actually, the reason I have one imperative. I want to do. Huh? The reason imperative. In other words, like if, you're, like if you've got two glasses of water, you're putting a pitcher in, and one glass is not going to hold the water, the other one will, there's a reason imperative that says you choose one glass over the other. We're not going to do what's not reasonable. We have to do what's the reasonable. reasonable. Oh, yeah, I've done shows on this. You have no choice but to always do what you think is the right thing to do, now all that things does, considered. That doesn't, it's not exclusive. No, no, that's a hedonic imperative. Be less pleasurable. No, Let's but it's also reason. Now, but that's like, part of pleasure. No, I know, but um, you actually, with the pleasure, we've got other imperatives like the moral imperative. Yeah, but one. everything falls under the pleasure principle. I agree, everything. I agree. I agree that however you define pleasure and however you define pain. If someone will call the show and say, well, I'm a masochist. I cut myself. I'm a borderline. I commit su if I, I I like to commit suicide every night. Well, how is that the pleasure? Pr I mean, I'm just saying in theory you can't commit suicide every night. You can only do it once. But why would someone say I do negative things? I run a marathon. I heard you say that. See, right? Why would someone say I'm not doing the pleasure principle because I do things that purposely hurt myself? Well, the answer and to that and grueling Iron Man things. Why? No, the answer to that is sometimes we predict that if we experience a certain amount of pain in the present, that will lead to greater overall pleasure in the future. That's why people work. It's why we do stuff that we may not necessarily want to do. So the word sacrifice isn't really a word. You're right. I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because, like, it's not really sacrifice. You're doing what, like, you know, what's going to, like, kind of, like, satisfy your conscience, what's going to satisfy your prediction. Get you into heaven. There you go. So the word sacrifice doesn't really exist. What about the word altruism? Is that does that exist? Nah, really, because like you know, like I mean, if you want to say that, yeah, altruism. If you want to say that altruism is like you're kind of like sacrificing your your certain. No, you it's, know. it's still the hedonic imperative. Nope. No, I no hear such you. word. I hear you. I hear you. What about I did a selfless act? Selfless. Yeah, no such thing. And the other thing, again. <laughs> okay. Messiah has talking. Messiah George. No, because the other thing King is, like, George. it's not up to us anyhow. You know, it's up to, like, whatever's making no, us No, but if the hedonic stuff. imperative, otherwise known as the pleasure principle, we didn't invent it, Sigmund Freud, if everything's falling under the hedonic imperative, then altruism, selflessness, sacrifice, mar martyring, those, those words don't exist. All right, so let me ask because you Because they something. all fall under what's best for me. We're doing the best we can, right? At the time. At what, all right, and the, 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 our audience is doing the best they can, right? Our yeah, world but we're is change doing facilitators. Listen to me. All right, we're doing the best we can, right? Three years we've been doing this. Three for you, two for me. The question that arises in my mind is like, why would the universe get us to do this for three years and not allow, not allow our audience to either get this or sufficiently appreciate this? That's the topic of the next show. Is it? Why? No. We only got three and a half minutes left. No. I love this topic. Why is George and Anel wasting our precious life, energy, time, money, coming to this studio on cable access, sometimes in the know. middle of the night, sleet, snow, rain, we go, we trek to 59th. Three and years we've been doing we this. Go in the middle of the night to take your calls, and nobody's helping us. We do a nobody's show Nobody's calling us. Nobody gets it. People argue with me. What about the other day when that person said, uh, they don't want to I get make it. decisions. I have free will because I make decisions. Uh, we'll I tried to explain for hours that's totally not what free will means. He didn't get it. We'll start the next show. The next show is going to be free will. The free there may will not be another test. show. We don't, we don't want to keep doing this. No, I know, but we have to. You know why? No, our hedonic imperatives are telling me this is a waste of time. I know, but, but we're compelled. It's not up to not us. You are. I'm getting close to the breaking point. That's why, like, after these two <laughs> shows, such a comedy we're, going, hour. we're going into reruns. It's so much better without any we're script. We're going into reruns, man. I'm telling you, like, after these next two shows, we'll do a this live is what show the audience can once do. a month. Call somebody you know? in New York or anywhere watching this. Get us an agent. Call MNN. We need this show or a show. I don't even care if it's us anymore. We need a live debate show on CNN with all the world leaders debating if there's free will or not every night for the rest of our lives, 9 o'clock, every time zone at 9 o'clock to 10 or 8 to 9, prime time, 
let's see Deepak Chopra with Barack Obama, with the head of this country, and Putin and me and him debating the most important topic and get this right. Let's see this. Let's. We need to see this on CNN. Let's do some or commercials. Any, Fox. And, we yeah, got I mean, two minutes left. Well, All right. This isn't the only show we've been doing since since September of 2011. We've been do doing your show in Manhattan. That's what I'm saying. I've been which, doing it for two years. I know. Let's not date ourselves. Yeah. Whatever. Two years. I mean, like you know, and we're live in Manhattan. People call us in that show, and they don't get it. They don't get it. I know why they don't get it. Cause the universe. Nope. Doesn't allow them to get it. Nope. Pleasure principle. Hedonic imperative has got its fingerprints on yeah, but everything. Think about this, all right? They, they can't stand the idea that there's no free will. I agree with They're, you. They enjoy believing in free will. It is unhinging right. to them Wait, psychologically. Listen to They'll this. have a nervous listen, breakdown. I hear you. I hear you. It's a pleasure principle, but you want to know something? God or the universe could, if it, he, whatever wanted, have them derive more pleasure from getting it than from not getting it. First of all, the universe doesn't have free will, so I don't know what you're talking about. But Think about it. But They're that's what needs to happen. People need to get more pleasure from not believing in free Think will. Of than it's, yes. Think of what I'm saying. Think of what I'm saying. Yes, the universe, that's how it will happen. If the universe made them get more pleasure from getting it than well, from not getting it, Well, the way that would it, start then, is having more it. pleasure watching our show than doing anything else we got about at Wednesday at 11 p.m. Yes. All right, so like you have to have more pleasure watching our show than doing anything else to start getting it. That's well, if, if not you get, everything. Everything. If you do, if if you like cooking at eleven o'clock on Wednesday more than watch, well, you can watch TV in the kitchen. But you have to be enjoying not having. All right, free I got to end the show. We okay. got thirty seconds. All right, so like we got this show. Like it's on like every Wednesday at seven thirty, every Thursday at nine o'clock here in White Plains. We play these shows in Manhattan. We got it. our meetup every first yeah, keep Saturday of the month. New York City, the Sony building, building Madison Avenue, New York. We're going to be doing this. If it takes 10 years, you know, to do this, to get this, we're going to do it until you get it. We'll, well be it's not back. up to us. Maybe, maybe it's not. It's not up to us. We'll be back with more episodes. Maybe, Thanks maybe for not.